Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. And whilst you're here, why don't you just hit that subscribe button? It would mean a lot. I cannot believe that another week has gone by. The time is just absolutely flying by. And it's time to record another piece on words. In fact, it's two for the price of one because there will be a bit more bar humbugging going on in there because the words are coming from one particular group of people, British MPs. I have to say they are not a group of people that I particularly respect. Probably that's because the ones who say things, do things, put the foot in it, are the ones who make it into the news. Those who are doing a good job getting on with doing what their constituencies ask them for. They're having their surgeries, but they're also voting. We don't hear about those. Twas ever thus. But I want to talk about the words that they come out with. And first of all, I need to say that my, hold my hand up and admit that my dislike my mistrust of MPs is based on experience with just three of them. The first was a guy called Jeremy Thorpe many moons ago when I lived down in Devon and he was electioneering. I, at six months pregnant, was up a stepladder cleaning my windows. He pulled up in his car behind me through his loudspeaker Madam, can I rely on your vote? I can't remember what I said to him, but I imagine I gave him short shrift and I know I was sorely tempted to throw my wash leather, which was pretty soggy and pretty cold, in his direction, but I resisted. Another experience was much more local now and much more recent. Um, the sitting MP at the time had said that he would help the charity for which I worked. Would I go along and see him? So off I went. And he made a note of all of the things that he was going to do to help us. It was going to be fabulous. And gave him about six months, got in touch and asked for another appointment. And I was asked the reason why. And I said, because the things that were promised just have not materialized. So off I went to the meeting. And he said, I understand that you feel I haven't done much for you. I said, that's one way to put it. I said, I would put it that you have done diddly squat for us. <laughs> I treasure the look on his face as he picked up a pen and said, I will make sure that I write down what I am going to do. I said, yes, could you write it down and could I have a copy, please? So he did do some of the bits, but not all of them. So, hey-ho. So it's about what the MPs come out with. First of all, there's the word salad. If they're being interviewed and asked a question that they don't want to answer, it's blah, 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 round onto stuff that they would like to boast about, change the subject about, anything. Oh boy, and do I love it when it's a presenter who keeps saying, thank you for that, but I asked you. Can I remind you the question was, and on and on, though they usually even so have to give up in the end. Then we have the ones who are coming out with wonderful statements at present. The guy who suggested that in this economic climate where food prices are going up, people should consider looking at the value aisles, at the value products, the own brands. Do you know? I'm so glad he said that. I'm sure people would never have considered doing that. Duh, which 
planet is he on? And then we have the lady who this week has come out with some interesting comments. And she has suggested that if you are struggling financially, then work extra hours or get a better paid job. I wonder what it's like living on her planet because she sure doesn't live on the same planet as us. Uh, I will rest my case there because I could go on and on. I won't. So thank you for listening. If you've got any examples of daft things that MPs have said or done, do leave them in the comments section. I'd love to see them. Thanks ever so much. Take care. Bye.